Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and thank you for joining us again this week um, for another webinar that our team runs now every week. Uh, so today's topic is mobile all field operations. And uh, we are gonna be talking specifically about several items that we're gonna present the agenda in a second. So today's agenda is uh, dedicated to a number of topics that we're going to be talking about, not only the mobile applications, but what you can do on mobile in rigor. Uh, so the three presenters are here. So it's going to be myself, Lev, and Arsene. Uh, and we will talk about uh, the different mobile operate, uh, mobile applications that we have now developed for rigor. So first will be the mobile off-field operations. So that's, a, that's an existing app that we've developed, and it has a a number of different features in it. But we'll also talk about new apps that we have uh, functionally divided from a larger app. And now we have a broader array of applications that include the sales and the mobile purchases. We'll also touch on the best practices uh, because mobile is a very peculiar sort of way of doing operations in some cases. So we'll share with you how we think you can benefit the most when you implement mobile uh, or rigor on mobile. So again, to those of you who are new, so those who've seen already uh, this kind of slides about the rigor, you can just kind of you know sip your coffee and enjoy the ride for a couple of minutes. But I'm going to talk about where we come from and what we do and where we've been so far. So rigor is a Belkasoft's uh, flagship product, and our main mission is just to promote and develop the paperless enterprise in oil field rentals and services industry. Uh, in North America and beyond. We focus on the custom solutions, understanding that every business is different. So we develop new applications uh, based on the core of the product. And we also promote and advance the integrations with other systems. So we understand that none of these software programs are the best in class in all possible categories. So we are promoting partnership and develop integrations with other software platforms. So again, Rigor family is growing as far as the number of applications as well as the geographic span goes. So as a platform, Rigor has the cloud uh, system that stands behind the cloud-based database that is fully supported by the uh, Rigor mobile uh, uh, applications. And that's the topic of today's conversation. So the mobile now includes four different um, for different apps themselves. So the mobile oil field, oil field sales, oil field operations, and oil field purchases. And we also just wanted to bring up to those of you who are new with us today, we have applications that we have built specifically on the platform for different types of businesses. And they're listed right there at the bottom that include the rental equipment distribution, the downhole tools, waste management, flowback, telecom rig move. So Rigor is a platform. And out of the platform, we've developed specific applications for a growing number of customers, geographically speaking as well. So some of uh, the customers are presented in this slide and the kinds of equipment on the right hand side. Again, this is just to highlight whom we, we've been enjoying work with. Uh, so we are welcoming new members of our community every day. And on the right-hand side, you can see the kinds of equipment that our system allows you to manage. It's very flexible. Again, we can set it up to meet any, basically any need of any business. It's just only we need to sit down with you, discuss what the specific needs of yours are. So that's where it all starts. Basically, mobile operation, mobile, uh, as well as the uh, cloud, is designed to support the key functions of the oil field operations. And I'm going to briefly touch on what is this, what is what rigor is designed around so the key thing that we've identified when we design rigor as a platform is that the dispatching function and operations management has been struggling the most as far as the lacking of any system a system system that supports operational processes is so we've designed rigor to support and put one single person in the middle who is the dispatcher so the person who is usually running 24 hour shifts and usually overstressed and overwhelmed and the person that has to know everything and and about any kind of equipment and the people and the clients. So the purpose of Rigor was to make sure that we uh, kind of you know, uh, lessen the stress and make sure that we help to build the processes in the software for the operations management. So we connect people in the field to the people in the office and the dispatcher being the center also is connected to the general management whom they quite often report to on how things are going. So uh, Rigor in that sense has both in the cloud solution as well as a mobile to perform uh, for, the, for the dispatchers to perform their activities. So the workflow generally uh, sort of is made of a number of documents, but here's a quick overview what kind of documents generally are generated. And they, and they again, can scale up uh, and can be uh, more advanced in different companies, but this is just a general flow. So uh, we support with rigor as a solution, we support the code, 
uh, the rental service agreement generation process that includes information about the client's location, the equipment, and the prices, and everything else that comes along with that. Then uh, any kind of ticket that can be generated as part of the activities, the operational activities. The dispatchers, you can see right there, sitting in the middle of the screen because they are supposed to know everything and be the connector in the system. So the yellow square or rectangle, rather, so it identifies how much of the function, operational function supported on mobile. And you can generate quote, you can generate agreements, you can generate tickets and update tickets, you can close tickets, you can generate tickets delivery to or from location, uh, except for the invoice. We know the invoice is a very sensitive topic for many companies. And um, in the oil field, invoices are very complex and can be very lengthy, multi-page ones. Mobile, by the, due to the format, is very limited as far as the visibility of information goes. So what we did on purpose, we've taken out the ability to generate invoice from the mobile device, uh, and it's only uh, available to be done uh, through the cloud. That usually is appreciated by the people who are in the senior positions as well as in the leadership, because they want to make sure that they have the full control of who and when generate the invoice. That's why the final checks when they're done, uh, and then the invoice can be issued out of the office through the login, through the thin client at the office location. But everything else, every other operation can be effectively done using rigor mobile application. So as a platform, again, we just wanted to highlight uh, one more time that Rigor uh, is a cloud solution with the fully supported uh, and fully de developed native mobile applications, both for the Android and iOS. So we also, that's what we call, uh, so the desktop application is called the Thin Client in our case. So you have a link to your database in the cloud and you boot it right from your desktop computer that requires full internet connection and has to be online. You can also access Rigor through a web client uh, so you can, in other words, in a browser, you can actually uh, type in your address and the database and you will have literally the same access, uh, but not through the thin client, but through the cloud app or through the browser as an application. And the third part, how you connect to your information uh, in rigor is the mobile. That's going to be the focus of our today. And mobile does not require constant internet connection to be able to conduct your functions or perform your functions rather. And you can use both Android and iOS devices and uh, rigor application works both online and offline. So you can use any device, uh, computer, laptop, tablet, or phone to conduct your operations. So on that note, I wanted to pass the mic to our software consultant, Arsene who's gonna talk about the uh, mobile oil field applications in rigor, business processes, and uh, role-focused um, aspects of our setup. Yes, thank you, Nikolai. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So let's talk about a bit about our mobile applications. Now, in the past, we only had one application, the rigor mobile oil field, and it basically encapsulated every single aspect besides the invoicing in the application. So you could run a full cycle of a job, uh, from within your app. And uh, recently we've added uh, three more applications to our mobile family, which are more focused on uh, roles or rather the operations parts of uh, the business. So those are the oil field sales, the oil field operations and the oil field purchases. So let's move to the next slide and you can see that uh, oil field sales and oil field operations are basically split from the mobile oil field. Well, now we have uh, the mobile oil field fully operational and it's still going uh, and it's still going to be uh, maintained as usual. But we've tried to simplify and uh, to lighten the apps a bit because we had some issues in far regions where no uh, or rather poor internet connection was present and uh, our some of our clients were having issues with synchronizing due to that internet quality so we simplified the uh, operation uh, the applications themselves and we've also uh, enhanced some of the uh, synchronization features so oil field sales and oil field operations are parts of the mobile oil field but standalone applications. And the oil field purchases is a fully fledged, new blown, uh, full application for uh, field purchases, uh, just a new one. Okay, so the oil field sales itself, what it has. Basically on your screen, you can see two screenshots. The sales is all about the salesperson going to the field, 
uh, getting the client to sign the rental service agreement, creating the rental service agreement in his application, and sending it to approval for uh, management. Now let's move to the next slide and the operations side of the uh, oil field operations. What we have in these applications, uh, in this application are the field tickets, the delivery tickets to perform the job, and we have uh, all the safety documents that are present in the cloud system in the oil field operations application. On this note, let me pass the, uh, the mic to our uh, VP of operations, Gleb, and he will talk about mobile oil field operations in general and business processes. Thank you very much, Arsen. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, again, my name is Gleb. I'm VP of operations in Rigor. And uh, thank you guys and Nikolai and Arsen for the broad introduction of the Rigor system and mobile applications particularly. So without further ado, let's move on to the uh, real life application uh, presentation. So we are gonna show you how applications are working in the real life and uh, actually uh, we will just go through the uh, whole cycle of the one simple oil field job, uh, starting from the oil field sales on the iPad, and then we'll show you how different roles in the system and different people in the company perform different actions uh, seamlessly. So the information flows uh, without any interruptions from the mobile application through the cloud server and appears on the desktop application of the person sitting in the office. So let's just get started. Okay, let's open this sales app and create a simple rental service agreement. Now when we open the sales application, the first thing we see is the start page. This is where you will see all the uh, rental service agreements created by you and everything that, that is pending for changes. Now on the top left corner, we can see the menu icon. We just tap on it, select the rental service agreements. And it opens, opens a list of rental service agreements that are currently available for the salesperson to view based on his permissions. Now, if we tap on the plus button at the top right hand corner, we can start creating a new rental service agreement. We will have to set the date of the rental service agreement itself. We will also have to choose the client. Now, the, you can see there's a huge list of clients and instead of just scrolling, I can tap on the search bar and start typing. And I can choose my client for right from there. I will also have to choose the location. Let's do Red Fox Plant. We'll need to set the job date start date. I can also set the end date if I need to give a precise quote to my client. But uh, for this purpose, for this uh, session, I will leave it blank just to have more flexibility. We check all the information on this screen, see if everything fits our needs and we move to the next tab, which is the rental units. We click on add and we add a rental unit that we need to add for this job. Now again we can do a search and I will search for a 100 kilowatt generator. It's right at the bottom. Here you can see and I can also change the price if I need to but I'm gonna leave it as is. Click on Dan, done and you can see that my uh, next two tabs, service and additional fee, have populated with some more information. Now if we go to the service tab, we can see that we have three, two services actually here and one service which accumulates parts for the generator itself. And we have the additional fee which itself is the fuel usage. So basically all those services and the additional fee itself are tied to our generator and we do not need to add anything more. So just click on these three dots at the top right hand corner and from here I can print the quote, I can print the rental service agreement itself and I can also collect the signature of the client. Now it's going to ask me to save so OK and it gives me the field to collect the signature and let's draw something like this. Save click on post 
and basically we are done again you can see that our rental ser service agreement it, uh, has the blue color which in our system with the statuses means it's signed we can swipe left for more options if we need something else but basically this is everything that we need to do to create a rental service agreement now for it to be available for approval we will need to go to the menu select tools synchronization and synchronize the application with the cloud it starts the synchronization process and on my end everything is done so I will be waiting for the approval for my manager as a salesperson and uh, another feature of Rigor mobile application is an, uh, is an ability to send the email from the application directly using the mobile uh, client so either you use the standard uh, iOS or Android mobile client or through your Outlook application um, in uh, your mobile device. So you'll be able to send these quote generated on the mobile app through the uh, email application. And uh, this will be exactly delivered to, the, to your recipient or it can be sent to any other person in the company. So once it's done and the job is waiting for the approval from the senior management or whoever is responsible for approve the jobs in the company. So we go to the next stage, which is the actually approval process. And we're going to show you uh, on the rigor uh, desktop application how it can be done. So once the uh, senior management opens the rigor on his uh, desktop application, he is able to go to oilfield rentals menu. And uh, amongst the list of all our documents, we need to open the rental service agreements list where we will find uh, all the rental service agreements generated in the system or already uh, in the active status. So we open up the list and now at the bottom of this screen you can see the uh, agreement generated on the mobile app and it has a specific mobile number that shows that this agreement has been generated uh, in the system. So every user will have its own uh, prefix. So we open up the agreement. We need just to check all the details that our salesperson has entered in the field, like client location, maybe to change the date and check all the details uh, of services, parts, equipment, additional fees. And uh, if everything is correct, we just go to the status drop down menu and we open the necessary uh, status or we just can uh, type in the approved and change the agreement to the approved status, which will then if it, uh, uh, allow us to generate a delivery ticket for the dispatching the equipment or provided provision of the services. So that's actually how the approval process looks like and it's pretty simple. So once the, we post this rental service agreement, the information is synchronized back to the cloud and salesperson can receive the, these uh, details on his mobile application and he will see that this, appro uh, this RSA is approved. So uh, now let's go further to the uh, dispatching uh, stage of this uh, job and let's see how we can dispatch the equipment. Let's now see how the dispatching side of the operations is done. Assuming I'm in the role of the dispatcher, again, I will have to go into the rental service agreements list, which is located under the oil field rentals menu. When I open it, I can see that I have one approved rental service agreement that was created on mobile. So I just open it up. And I will need to deploy the generator to the class location. So for that purpose, I will have to create a, a, a delivery ticket, which is done by clicking on generate and selecting delivery ticket. Now this opens a new window where we have all the information available in the RSA already pre-filled in the forms in the delivery ticket. So all we need to do is just to make some adjustments and post the ticket. First of all, we set the date. We know it's going to be started uh, on June 24. So we just change the date. We also know that the field technician will be John Collins. So we change that name too. We select the unit number for our generator. Let's go with the 
RT07. Move to the services tab. Obviously we are delivering so we are not going to need the pickup generator service and also let's remove the fittings service. We will leave the additional fee which is the fuel usage. We can also set the time in the time tab but we'll, we will skip this too and we can use some external internal comments. External comments are visible on the print forms and the RSA itself and the internal comments are only used internally. So after again verifying the information we just click on post. And this is how I've just uh, delivered, deployed my rental unit and the service to the client's yard. This is everything that is needed to be done to uh, activate the delivery in the system. Now let's move on to the next stage when the field technician receives his uh, field ticket or delivery ticket in his mobile application and he can be notified automatically by email uh, that he receives a new job and actually he just need to open the, the application and work out his ticket and check the information and everything can be done in the field again once the uh, mobile application is synchronized with the cloud uh, storage. We just saw how the dispatcher moved the equipment to the client yard using the delivery ticket assigned to the field technician but still the field technician needs to move that equipment physically to the client location. For that purpose we have designed the mobile operations application which allows the field technician to have everything in hand and see what he has to do at the current point in time. So when we open the application after synchronization we can see that uh, there is a delivery ticket assigned to the field technician. Let's assume I'm the field technician and I'm gonna pop open the delivery ticket and I can see all the information about the job. So I need to move to the client EOG resources to the location Red Fox plant I got some other contact information, no comments yet. Let's move to the rental unit tab. And I can see that I am moving a generator unit number RT07. And I know that RT07 had technical issues. So I am going ahead. I'm going to go ahead and swap the RT07 with another one that I know is in a good condition. So I click on it, click on it again click on the value and change the value of the rental unit number to RT09. And you can see on the left part of the screen that the unit number has been changed. And I want to leave a comment that I have changed it and I will do it by using the internal comment field. Changed to RT009. Okay, now comment is in place. Let's go see what else we are going to provide as a service. So on the services tab, yeah, we have one service, which is delivery, okay. And on a time tab, I can uh, set the times for the job. Okay, so I've made some changes. I click on post. I don't really need to fill in the geo coordinates for the location as of right now. So I've posted the document and again all I need to do is to go ahead and synchronize my application. Now there are two there is two ways to synchronize the application with the cloud. You can go to the main menu, hit on tools and synchronization or a shortcut from the start screen. Just hit the synchronization icon at the top right corner like this. And this would be how the field technician can uh, see the updated information on his mobile application and change it if necessary. Okay, good. And uh, another option to provide the services from the mobile application directly is to generate a field ticket right from the uh, rental service agreement or if the field ticket has been generated uh, previously on the desktop application, the field technician can also see that on his mobile app. And the difference between field ticket and delivery ticket in the mobile app, that field ticket allows you to 
uh, specify the equipment for which the services are provided, and also to build a crew that do uh, uh, the services actually, and uh, also uh, include the materials that are used in the uh, service. For example, if you do cleaning services, you probably may use some materials for it. Or for example, if the field technician uh, uses some uh, instruments in his work, so he can specify that as well on the ticket so everyone will know and actually the equipment, uh, sorry, the quantity of these uh, materials or instruments will be tracked as well. In case of uh, using some supplies or uh, parts that are utilized during the service, the system will write off these um, parts or supplies from the inventory, so everyone will stay in a loop of the actions performed. Also, a rigor mobile application allows you to generate a number of safety documents that are supporting the job. So on the left-hand side from the menu, you can see that we have vehicle inspection, hot work permit, job safety analysis, hazard assessment, and near miss incident report. That uh, those uh, documents can be generated in, in the mobile app right away uh, in the field. So uh, the field technician can do the job safety analysis, just check mark and tap the yes, no buttons. And uh, also in the vehicle, vehicle inspection, once uh, one of the uh, defects are checked or swiped, so the list of defects can be uh, automatically filled in. And uh, if you have uh, parts uh, for these defects that are set up previously in the desktop application, so those parts will be added to the ticket and again, there will be uh, written off from the inventory, so you don't need to manually somehow perform these actions. Okay, so we will move on and take a look at the invoicing part of this uh, job. Let's talk invoicing. Obviously, at some point in time, be it the end of the job or be it in the middle of the job, you will need to invoice your clients. So for that purpose, let's assume this is the end of the job to make it a bit more complicated. Let's go uh, and let's go on and open the RSA. We will have to create a delivery ticket return and return all of our equipment to our shop. So for that, we just click on generate delivery ticket. And it automatically, you can see, has selected the type of return. So we check all the information. We set the date as 26th of June it's automatically gonna change the return date for the rental equipment too. We can change the field technician to John Collins as he was doing all this job. We will have to select our rental unit number that we are returning. Check the services, add a service because we will need to have a pickup generator service present. And we can leave the additional fee, verify the information again, and basically just post. Now it's posted in the system, so our equipment is returned to our shop document-wise, so we can go ahead and generate a rental invoice. Click on generate, select rental invoice, set the date of the invoice, it's gonna be again 26, Click on generate. And this is our invoice. You can see the rental fee tab, our rental fee, uh, rental uh, unit, the generator itself, the services and parts that we have provided, and additional fees. So we can check if everything is correct. We can print our invoice, and it's gonna ask us to save the invoice itself. So click OK. This is the print form of the invoice, which by the way, we can email, we can save it to PDF, export it to Excel, or just click on print to have a hard copy of it. Just click on post to post the invoice in the system and it is going to check whether we have any remaining rental units on the location. And uh, if we don't have any remaining items there, it would it's gonna ask to close the rental service agreement. So we click on yes, and we're basically done. Okay, so you, you've just seen the simple uh, job cycle uh, of uh, 
of just a simple uh, job. So now I hope you have a better understanding how uh, information is flowing from one uh, application to another one and how it's uh, been delivered to the different person. Uh, in, in case you have any questions, we can open the window for the questions and just ask you if, uh, if something is not clear for, it for now. So we will be able to address these questions. Thank you, Gleb, and thank you, Arsene. Um, indeed, it was an interesting first part, and we wanted to let you know that it's only the, the first part of the, today's presentation, so just don't leave just yet. Um, and um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a Q and A button at the bottom of your control panel, uh, or at, in your control panel at the bottom of your screen, rather. So feel free to type up your questions. And I have one question now from Laura. So Laura is asking, can you add additional line items to a field ticket on mobile device. I guess we've shown how you can change information about a selected uh, device or a selected item, uh, but uh, when it was created on, on, on a desktop, but the question is about how do you add a item on, can you add a line item uh, if you're a field tech uh, on mobile device? Yes, absolutely. You can add as many line items on the mobile device as you need. So, for example, if uh, the ticket has been generated on the desktop application and sent to the field tech in the mobile app, but he can open that and add as many fields. Like he can add any equipment to it and maybe provide additional services and add it to the mobile uh, ticket. And also he can add uh, additional fees like parts maybe or fuel. So yes, everything can be uh, edited on the mobile application actually. So the only thing that matters is to synchronize this information back to the cloud uh, and desktop applications. So uh, dispatcher or operations manager will stay uh, um, informed about these changes. So Gleb, thank you Gleb. And another question from Laura, from Laura again. So internal comments. Uh, I've noticed that you filled out uh, the field uh, with the internal comment. How do they, how does the information get into the office? Yep. Uh, okay, so, so. Yeah, go, go ahead. Let me, let me get this one, Gleb. Yeah, when you uh, put an internal comment in the system and you synchronize your application with the cloud, it basically comes visible to all of the people involved in the job, be it the dispatcher, be it the uh, manager, be it the uh, accountant, the sales guy, whoever has access to that information will see that internal comment. So all they have to do is just basically check it or even they can be notified within the system. So see, system can be tweaked to notify you when uh, some kind of an internal comment is input in the system. Perfect, perfect, thank you. And I just wanted to add uh, my question to that because thank you, Laura, it's an interesting kind of chain of questions on how you can update information on mobile. So if I enter on a ticket one internal comment uh, in the, throughout the job, if I need to, for example, I entered an internal comment when I am at the yard picking up the equipment, but when I'm on location, I want to add another internal comment. How do I do that? Do I just add to the existing one or does the system create a new comment? No, the internal comment and the external comment fields are uh, like, uh, I would not say unique, they are single fields. So you just have to add your comments down below or at any part of the field that you want to. So um, you just discuss it with your like management, whoever is going to read that comments and you just find out the most convenient way for you to read those comments and just add them in the bottom or in the middle or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, wherever so place you like. Okay, so that's one field where you can update it on an ongoing basis and add additional comments into it, right? Yes, yes, okay. yes, exactly. Perfect. Yeah, perfect, okay. Well, thank you, thank you, Laura. So uh, just in the interest of time, uh, there will be another opportunity to ask questions. Let's just move on to the uh, next or to the second part of the presentation, thank you. Okay, so let's speak about the mobile purchases, the new application that we have. So uh, first of all, what, it, what it's intended for? It's intended for field purchases when uh, you need to purchase something and you need uh, to do it urgently. You can use this application to generate a purchase order request and get the approval from your management and just uh, make the purchase. So um, let's move to the next slide and I will just quickly say I was done. So we just opened the application itself 
and we go to the uh, purchase order request and uh, generate a new purchase order request. Now we can choose the type of the uh, expense that is going to be capital or operational. We check the other fields and we can go ahead and leave a comment for there and synchronize it to for approval. Now our purchase manager can do the same from his app and he can just go and open the purchase order request, see if it's okay, approve it, and basically this concludes all the cycle. So the person who created the purchase order request, again, just synchronizes his application with the cloud and he gets the approval and he can move on with his purchase. Great, thank you, Arsene, for this uh, presentation of the purchase mobile application. And we encourage our existing clients and the new clients to use this application wisely because we, we've, just de we've just developed this application. It's one of the recent developments and we, we're still in the development mode and, and, and enhancement mode, I would say rather, because we've designed this application, but uh, we constantly improve our features and our visibility settings and our interfaces of the applications and uh, both uh, mobile and desktop. So we are open for your suggestions, your wishes, your ideas about how we can improve that. And, and actually uh, the real life scenarios will help us a lot to improve it actually. So your feedback is highly appreciated. So if you have some thoughts about this or you just like to try this uh, application please give us a shout and we'll provide you the access to this application to use it and to try in your real life operations with your purchases business processes so we can move on to the next part of our presentation which is the best practices that we've seen uh, in our business with our existing clients and i'm going to cover this just a and a quick um, overview. So the first uh, and the most important uh, observation from our existing clients implementation projects and uh, when we have uh, implemented both desktop and mobile application um, uh, solutions of our uh, software, we've seen that uh, the best way how uh, uh, how uh, employees and how management of the company absorbs all these uh, new information, all these new skills using this the new software is in the um, multiple phases. Under the multiple phases, I mean that we can split the implementation of, this for, uh, of the software at least into the two phases, when on the first one, we implement the software into the office operations, uh, and the people using are using the desktop application of Rigor because the desktop application of Rigor is uh, the most uh, enhanced in, in, and the most you know uh, rich um, in terms of functions and visibility settings and different uh, features and modules. So because uh, you know that every mobile application of every software or or service that you've seen previously probably has less uh, functionality than the desktop, desktop applications just uh, with, for, for the reason of the smaller size of the screen and uh, just a little bit different user experience that you use the software on it. So uh, from, the, from this perspective, we usually suggest to implement trigger application first in the office for the dispatchers, maybe operations manager, maybe accountants or uh, office administrators. And once the everyone is 100% comfortable with the processes in the software and how you perform actions, how you see the documents, and how you set the print forms of the documents, how you use the reports. When everything is set up and working in the seamless way, we can now move on to the next phase, which is the mobile application implementation for the field personnel. So because um, from the office perspective, it's much broader and much, uh, you know, wider from the operation standpoint. And you then realize and understand how it should work in the, in the hands of the field personnel. Once it's realized, we start deploying the mobile applications to the field personnel. We probably start with a few people, maybe crew leads or supervisors. They use it in their real life in the fields and then they decide, okay, we are now able to and we are now ready to connect our 
uh, field personnel. It can be dozens of people who start using the mobile application at once in one day when we shift, when, when, when we do this shift. So, uh, and for us, it's also a kind of a challenge or just a task to see how everything is implemented and um, if any questions arise from the field personnel so we can train them how to use the mobile application. We provide additional support on the mobile application. So uh, that's our based observation of the uh, mobile applications uh, implementation for the company. Now also I'd like to share with you our recommendations if you you have started using the mobile application or you're, you're just going to use it in your uh, company. So the most important part of the mobile application as uh, Nikolai and Arsen has have already said that it's synchronization with the cloud storage. Because you already know that mobile application can work in the offline mode and all the information that is entered during the offline mode stays only in the mobile application memory, uh, memory of the mobile device. But in order to transfer this information, we need to synchronize it with the cloud storage and have the internet connection at least, or Wi-Fi connection. So you need to, or your field personnel need to synchronize uh, mobile application at least once a day. Usually we see that uh, in our existing client situations that uh, it can be a case when the field personnel and the field technician synchronizes his mobile app at, in the morning, say he stays at the uh, hotel or in the office or at home, so he synchronizes the mobile application, he receives all his tickets for the day, he goes out to, uh, to the field, performs the jobs, and all the information he's has entered during the day, he synchronized back in the evening or during the night to the mobile uh, to the cloud storage, and um, in the morning the office um, personnel can see this information. Now, another great feature of the rigor uh, system is to send automatic email notification about the new documents. So, and it can be done both from mobile application or desktop application. So, once the uh, say uh, field technician has been assigned to the job and to the ticket, he can receive email notification about a new job and okay, he sees that, oh, that's my new job. So he goes to the mobile application, checks all the information and go further. Also, we usually suggest uh, don't upload video to the uh, tickets and the mobile application because actually the application allows you to upload external files like uh, files like pictures or any other documents uh, that's stored in the mobile uh, memory. But when you start uploading the videos, it starts consuming a lot of the sizes and a lot of the server um, storage. So, and every database in our uh, in our system has um, limited uh, size. So it's 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 a bigger number of of gigabytes. But still, if you start using mobile um, sorry videos, so it eats all this memory quite quickly. So that's our best recommendations how to use mobile application. Thank you, Gleb. Uh, so we've come to the to the uh, final slides, a uh, couple of final slides of the presentation, and uh, appreciate the recommendations. I guess we had, and speaking of the videos, we had some questions about can we upload the videos? Yes, <clears throat> definitely. If you want to, you can, but just be mindful of the space that it may be required because the resolution of the video can be too high. We usually, and that's why, <coughs> excuse me, it takes up a lot of space. We recommend to take pictures, and I think primarily. Pictures serve a better purpose, I guess, for you know, for for storage of the information and retention of that uh, as it, as it pertains to a job or to to, to a damage of the equipment or to uh, you know a photo or a scan of a document if you need to upload it to the system. So there's no limits to that as far as that goes. But when we talk about the gigabytes and gigabytes of the videos, that may create a problem down the road. So that's what we'll try to avoid it and we'll warn people not uh, to abuse that. So um, on that note, I wanted to let you know again that we can't take any questions uh, right now. Um, uh, and um, uh, if any, please type them up and we'll definitely be more than happy to answer them. One question I see now is from John. Uh, and the question is, can you modify mobile application to fit my specific needs? Uh, good questions from John and thank you for that because we, we 
can modify the application based on your uh, specific requirements. But uh, one of the small problem for you and a big problem for us because the mobile application usually requires additional development and moreover uh, a lot of uh, compliant, uh, compliance with the Apple Store or Google Play where we uh, publish our applications. And it's not only because of us, it's all also because of these platforms uh, that uh, register some requirements in front of us when we build our applications. But still, there is an ability and opportunity to build a, a specific application for your needs. For example, we've got some requests from our existing clients to build a only application for, say, safety purposes to, uh, to provide a ser safety uh, operations on the mobile app. And currently, uh, you have seen that uh, the safety is a part of our one of the, our mobile applications, but still there is an opportunity and ability to build it separately. Uh, and also we can build a white label application, so specifically designed for your company and your company logos will be placed on these applications. So yeah, here's the ability and our platform uh, allows us to build that pretty quickly and uh, time and, co and cost safely. Mm -hmm. So if you will have this kind of uh, necessity or requirements, we are, will be more than happy to discuss it with you and probably to provide you with that solution. Perfect. Well, thank you, Gleb. And indeed, just to reiterate that we can build an app, uh, but first we need to start with the cloud. As soon as we configure the cloud uh, with all the documents and the forms of the processes, then goes the mobile app, not the other way around. Um, so thank you, John, for your question. I have a question from Michelle. Can you schedule the sync on a routine uh, basis or does it have to be done manually okay uh, the short answer would be no you can't and there is a reason why you can't uh, basically you will never have the precise uh, template or the pattern rather that your job will be done at this point of time so your uh, the intention of the mobile application is to provide the information when it's up uh, when it needs to be updated so when the field technician does his job he knows it's done he can just synchronize the application manually so okay. the correct answer would be just only manually. manually and I guess yes. we just need to, yeah we just need to train the field personnel that they need to tap and that's why there's a shortcut uh, sort of tap circular arrows icon in the right hand side upper corner uh, where they need to tap after they have done the job so it's just a matter of training in a routine so um, yeah, yes. I, would like, I would like to add here a little bit that we've been discussing this opportunity and this ability quite a long uh, I would say even maybe more than a year ago but and we've just we've come up with the, with the uh, decision and solution that uh, for now we will have uh, the application that it works as it works right now i mean that field personnel should uh, synchronize manually but there is a um i would say opportunity on our roadmap to build an application that will be connected in a live mode with the cloud storage so everything will be done on the uh, uh, like I would say online, uh, like you do it on the desktop application or through your website, uh, through the web browser, when you connect to the your database through the web browser. But here's the most important limitation of this process because if you lose the connection with the internet, even for one second, the um, connection will be interrupted and information can be lost. Yeah, we'll notice. Unfortunately, it. we cannot guarantee uh, like to do some cached, um, I don't know, backups or something like that from the technical standpoint. So we we are trying to pres presume these uh, events. That's why we have uh, this application uh, with a uh, offline mode and the synchronization requirement. So it's been a battle, I guess, for us to decide whether to go full online only or online and offline. And we've made a decision to enable the offline with a manual sort of sync up option only as of now. But I don't think it's going to change anytime soon. So we'll, we'll train, we'll explain. And it's just a matter of, you know, reminding every, it may be a safety moment for a team. Guys, don't forget to synchronize your apps before, before you go to coffee in the morning and after you go to bed or before you go to bed in the evening. So that will be probably the, the easiest way to do that for them. 
Okay, so um, thank you again for the questions. I don't see any more questions right now, and I think we're coming up to the top of the hour. It's uh, 1.54 time flies indeed. Oh, there's another one. Let me just kind of quickly. Uh, can we schedule reminders? That's another question from Michelle. Uh, yes, I think yes, through our email notification uh, automatic tool. Mm -hmm. So we can create a separate template for your uh, employees, uh, for example, it will be sent every morning, every uh, midday or uh, at night. Mm -hmm. uh, you set this schedule and this template, email template will be sent to your uh, field guys just as a reminder and that's actually a good idea. That's a great idea actually, yeah, thank yes, you Michelle. Yes, absolutely, so yeah, and it's possible with the current uh, functionality of the system. So basically our email notifications will be will be the ones that we can get it set up to do the notifications to the people and specifically to the mobile users and they'll be sent to every mobile user I mean, however often they need to be sent, so that's uh, that's a good idea. Correct. Well, just to add to it, not only you can set it on based on a uh, time basis, but you can also send it when a change in a document happens. For instance, uh, the new purchase application we have, when you uh, make a change, your, you generate a purchase order request or you approve the purchase order itself, you can set up the, the email notification. When that change happens, you automatically get a notification on your email or your device. So, Perfect. Perfect. Okay, great. Any other questions? Although we know we're wrapping up for the day, we're going to be here next week and we're always there for the email uh, or on the email or on the phone. So if you don't have a question right now, you know where to find us. Please do find us and always contact us. So we'll be more than happy to help you guys. So thank you very much for being with us today. It's been a pleasure and a privilege. And we're looking forward to being with you next week, the same time, the same place. Thank you very much and have a great day and we're going to head. Thank you and bye. Well, yes.